So, with 600 wagons, 10 operators and 6 stations, how on earth are we going to keep track of all our wagons? Here's how. So, as we've talked in the past about freight operations on McKinley, the original layout had very little freight usage and part of the extension, or one of the core plans for building the extension, was to add freight to the railway. And we thought about it long and hard as to how we're going to do it. If you think about the idea of wagons, let's take this grain wagon for example. We have a uh, granary in Birmingham and we have a brewery in Manchester. In real life, the brewery would have phoned up the granary, placed an order for grain so they could make beer. The granary would have loaded their wagons, they would have been sent off, they get to Manchester, they then have to be unloaded and the brewery is satisfied and pays its bills. So McKinley, we want to emulate that with these wagons. We basically want to say, right, there's an order in the brewery, they need to put empty grain wagons into the um, granary at Birmingham, they have to be loaded, they then have to be taken out, put into a train that's going to depart. It's going to go via Sheffield, which is our major sorting lines. It's then going to go from Sheffield to Manchester, and then it's then going to be put in the brewery and unloaded. And once that's happened, well, the team have done their job, and maybe they win points, um, which is part of that's another plan. We'll come on that in another day. So there's quite a lot of thinking to be done about how do you make sure that these wagons go around the railway. We talked with lots of people about different ideas. Um, one code system was barcodes, another one was with magnets, and another one is RFID. RFI what? Well, the funny thing is, you and I use it every day of our lives. But it's not known by that, and what on earth RFID stands for, I don't really know. But when you have a credit card, the ones that have got the little waft o component on it, where you just put it down, it goes bleep and take it away, that uses the same kind of technology. And basically, the card reader in the shop is transmitting magnetic waves. These cards are inert. They've got no battery in them. They've got no life. They've just got a little chip and a pin and a tag. And as you put the card down in a, in a very decisive action, take it away, you see a set of green lights waft on it. And it goes bleep. And what happens, of course, is money's been taken from your account. You can walk out of Tesco's with your milk. But the clever bit is that this is just a tag in here that got registered and Tesco's took that tag ID, sent it up through to the bank and said, I'm Tesco's in Westbourne, um, I want to charge £4.50 against this tag, against this uh, card that's associated with this tag. It doesn't know the number of the card or anything. And the bank does all its clever stuff and sends back through from the databases, comes back and says, you're on, done. And I can walk out the shop with my milk. So this stuff is brilliant and that's what we decided to use. And we basically have got wagon readers around the layout and I'm going to describe the detail of those things in, in a bit more once I've shown you around the components. But we'll put wag wagon readers or reader locations under the track um, both in the extension and the existing layout. The problem for the existing layout is we're going to have to put it under the baseboards and there's a distance issue or we're going to have to rip up some of the track and put it underneath uh, the sleepers. On the extension, it's much easier because we're laying the track for the first time. And in here, as you can see, we've got these reader points at strategic locations. And on the railway, on McKinley Railway, we have it in two places. We have magnetic reader points, sorry, RFID reader points at the, at the entrance to sidings. And we also have it at the entrance and exit of uh, staging yard lines. Something to understand about RFID is it doesn't understand direction or orientation. It simply just registered the tag at the moment it went over it. And these tags are really tiny. I've got one here. It's paper thin, this one. And they cost about 2p each. They're, metal. They're really good. And we're basically sticking them on the wagons and I've got one here which we'll show you in some detail. That's the wrong one, but this is the right one. And there it is on the base of the wagon. And I'm going to talk you through that now. Um, so this technology seems to be working quite well for us and that's what we plan to use. So let's 
take you through all the specific components we're using on McKinley. And what we have got is an email which has got all of that information on it. So for those of you that are a bit geeky like me, it's all there and we'll have that at the end of this. These RFID tags that we have, we put them on the back bottom of wagons. We, if you look at this wagon here that doesn't have one on, you can see that there's a piece of neoprene right at the bottom of the wagon. And this RFID tag is stuck onto the neoprene. The reason we use neoprene is to distance the tag from the metal in the base of the body. And I'll come back to the problems that one has with RFID a little bit later. But we put a tag on one of the wagons in a triplet, or maybe one or two of the wagons in a scenic set. That is, allows us how to track these things here. And we then have a set here, and I have the readers. These are the green things here. So this is one that we've got that hasn't attached. This is actually a bit of a long lead. We have got them with just half meter leads. And this is the um, antenna. This is the thing that picks up the signal and generates the magnetic field when the as the wagon goes over, it reads it. And that you put in under the track. And as you can see, it's got a very low profile. There's very little electronics on it. So it's easy to put into a track. This wire goes underneath the baseboard and goes to the smarts, which is, if you come and have a look under here with me now, you can see we've got two of them installed here. I wish I'd had one off, but we only had six to prove it. And what I'm going to do now, as you're watching underneath, I'm going to take a train over here, and it'll flash over it. Now, the important thing to understand is that each of these tags has a unique ID. They're all different. And I've got a whole box of them over here hundreds of them. Every one of them is different. And that allows me to then associate um, a specific tag with a specific set of wagons. And Ian is watching the system right now. And if I say, Ian, what's going over there right now? Can you tell me? Coming on the set 22. And there we are. If I just take the same set again here and see what Ian says about this. Have I taken the same wagon set over again, Ian? No, that's set, tag set 21. Oops. He's quicker than the average bear, that bloke, I tell you. So there you get it. So that's what we're seeing in terms of the devices in the track, the, 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 the components that go into each wagon or under each wagon, and how it's reading. So then the next bit, I suppose, is to understand how it all works in terms of going, going over around the room. The devices under the board have a 5 volt power supply and nothing else. They use the wireless network, the wireless network you have with your BT router. And we have a little dedicated Raspberry Pi in the room over there, which is going to cap which actually does capture the output from all of these transmitters, or well, the boards underneath that are attached to these aerials. So we do not even have to install a bus on this. We simply use a wireless network. It goes through the Raspberry Pi, which then concentrates all that data coming in. And two things are being sent. The first thing that's being sent is the ID of the pickup station here. I, is it this one? Is it that one? Um, each of these has a different ID. And then the second thing that's sent is the transponding ID. So technically, it's just two numbers that get sent over the network, which is not much use to man nor beast. It's um, recording device 11 with, wag with chip ID 959, um, and so on and so on. You need something to interpret those numbers. Uh, which is therefore it's very suited towards computers. That data goes over through the Raspberry Pi across the network and we take it into a computer today and the information that Ian is reading off of is a simple homegrown database at this point in time that has the wagon IDs with pictures of the wagons and if I run this through again now and you watch the screen over there you'll see it picking up those wagons and again there and that's how we can test the system and prove it. What we haven't done yet is how do we connect all this up for our railway operations. That is a journey that's going to take us probably the next two to three years. We want to use the iPads and the same software, but we've got to get that data into that database. It's, it's ideal for that database, but the user interface stuff and getting our operators trained on how to work with freight is a journey that's going to take us some time. And as you can see from behind me here, we've still got a railway to build. So that's, that's kind of the stuff, the icing on the cake that's going to come down the line. One final thing just to note with RFID 
is there are some limitations. It doesn't like metal and it doesn't like electricity. And unfortunately, we've got a lot of that <laughs> on model railways. So we spent some time experimenting with different sizes of aerials and with different frequency technologies, i.e. what is the base frequency that these things transmit at, so that we could minimize the errors and the problems and maximize the distance that we would be able to reliably capture data from a tag. These readers are very sensitive to distance. On this particular system, if I put the tag across at this height, it would not read it, it would not register. If I put it across here, it does. But that's that's too easy. So sometimes we have, we're thinking, well, it might have to go beneath the baseboard. And that might be 15 mil plus the cork, plus the track, plus the gap between the wheels and the neoprene sponge. We could be getting to 20 mil. We found this system works, but we haven't tested it under the baseboards in there. So that's something we've still got to do. So electrical interference, we found that this system doesn't, isn't susceptible to it, luckily enough. And so we've got everything we need to, to, we've taken all the technolo technological problems out of this and now it's an implementation issue, if you know what I mean. So I've given you a brief overview of what we're doing with freight and with this RFID technology and it's very much a work in progress component and uh, we'll be producing more videos over the next couple of years. So I hope you've enjoyed that one and thanks for watching.